everybody and welcome to Campfire Stories with Carly. I'm Carly, the Instructional Coordinator here at Los Sucedos Historic Site, and I am bringing you stories from New Mexico. So this week I am going to bring you a letter between Maria Chabot and Alfred Stieglitz. So Maria Chabot, if you are familiar with our Stories from the North series, is the um, woman who is living on the site with um, Mary Wheelwright here at Los Suceros. And she was a farmhand, ranch manager. Um, she was Presidente of the Sequia Madre for a long time. Um, and she is quite the character. And then Alfred Stieglitz is actually the husband of Georgia O'Keeffe. And George O'Keefe, of course, is the famous um, American artist. So this letter, the reason I chose it is because it describes a camping experience between Maria Chabot and Georgia O'Keeffe. Um, it describes a very poetic view of northern New Mexico um, and gets pretty deep a little bit there. Uh, it gives us some things to think about. So let's go right in. Um, and you will hear in this letter, they refer to the Black Place. And that is actually in the Bisti Badlands um, in New Mexico and describes the black rolling hills of the black sand there. And so when I say the Black Place in this letter, that is what it's referring to. All right. <clears throat> 1943, Chabot Stieglitz, Postmark Charma, October 20th, 1943. This is a Tuesday afternoon and the 19th of October, and we have just returned from the Black Place. Snow is beginning to fly and everything is gray, tinged by that magic of being for the first time winter. The bushes and the trees, but they move differently than in summer or in fall. The grass and the cats and everything is cold. We have been cold too, for the first time last night and today. We were off at the black place and everything was dusty and still. The sky was a miraculous blue. Then the north wind began to blow. Georgia was painting. She was standing in the shadow of the car working on a little gray hill and clouds came up all over the sky. They seemed to converge right over our heads. You off there in the city cannot know what clouds mean when you are 150 miles from nowhere with only a narrow strip of road connecting you with four walls and a fire in a stove. Georgia had worked all day with her eyes fastened on that hill. The painting she got is wonderful, wonderful. She saw so much and said so little about it. But what she said is perfect as that little gray hill. It was the first of two paintings she wanted to do. Then the clouds came and we are quite helpless beneath them. We pitched our tent and ate our oatmeal and made our beds, and it got cold and the rains came. It was one of those typical black place nights where you battle all the sky and all the wind and water runs underfoot and the fire is a thing almost impossible to keep alive. There was a moon somewhere and every time it came out, we thought it was dawn and hoped it was dawn, but it never was. The dawn was as dark as the night and the tent fell in and we laughed like fools and loved it. Only, only had the sun come, she would have gotten another painting, a big painting. I haven't seen her drawing, but I have seen the place. And I know that when she does it, it will be the best thing yet of the black country. But that will be another year. So there is only one painting of this year of the black place. No matter how much one wants or how carefully one plans to do a thing, when it is done under the sky, the sky determines it. I learned that much in my bean fields. I have a new and utterly new respect and awe of the sky. Just from grubbing all summer in the earth under it, just from waiting for water to irrigate, just from waiting for wind to thresh, I learned that I wasn't so important. I learned that what goes on in my head doesn't matter a rap. The thing that decides is the sky. And I learned too, that I'm willing for it to decide. Georgia wrote you some of my ups and downs, else you could not have written to me with such sympathy, and I am grateful. But I want you to know that what I learned was worth so much more than the material factor of beans in the hand. I suppose what Georgia learns when she was painting out there is 
worth so much more than the painting. At the moment, she gets it. As we lay on our cots last night in the bitter dark with our tent heaving and roaring, we thought about you and how you would laugh at us. Georgia was buried in her bedroll with pajamas, robes, sweaters, scarves, and two woolen hoods on her head. She started out with a stiff neck, came of too much soft lifting in the house, but nature took it out of her. After two days of beating, she is as fit as a fiddle, brown with sand and red with sun. You will like this new picture. She has done some fine trees and a series of pelvises, very fine. At the end of my third year with her again, I say how lucky I am to live in the midst of what she is seeing and doing. I am very lucky and very grateful. I tell it to you because you are the only one who can really know what I mean. Thank you again for your last note to me. It cheered me immensely. My best to you, Maria. So I really like that letter because it is a really good description of a winter storm, New Mexico in October, and you know shows this kind of empowering mo movement between um, Georgia and Maria going camping on their own, you know, in the 30s, um, which is kind of kind of pretty awesome to hear about, right? Um, and uh, I just thought it was a really beautiful letter. So I hope you enjoyed. Um, and I'll catch you next time on Campfire Stories with Carly.